Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is going to make a tutorial about this Christmas light setup. Many concepts of this tutorial came from a Russian tutorialist using animation nodes, but this tutorial was in 2.79 and animation nodes probably 2.0. Uh, it's extremely outdated and not really possible to follow in the current version of animation nodes uh, 2.2. Also, he neither finished his tutorial. So, due to request, I've modified these methods and to make this kind of setup, which turns to be the topic today. To follow the tutorial, you will need the preset library, uh, which is free on Gumroad and you can get from the link in the description. So, let's start. This tutorial will be intentionally separated into two parts. The first part, we are going to work on a Suzanne head, and the next part, we will uh, move on to the text objects. So, we will have multiple characters. And the reason to do that is because uh, when you are working with a setup, a procedural setup, it's always easier when you start with a single unit. And then you move on to a multiple units because mo when moving on to multiple units, you usually involve a lot of a loop, a more complex setup, more issues that you will encounter in a single unit. So basically it will be easier for us to actually study and uh, play with the settings if we only have one uh, unit to play with. So talking about the basic principle of the entire setup is basically you create a kind of uh, whatever splines around the object and then you wrap the splines onto our target object. And then you instance light on this spline. And there are two ways to wrap the splines onto the object. One I think is to use the recast the BBH tree. But uh, I tested that this method is too accurate, so it sometimes does not really look very interesting. Another method is to use the modifier, which is called shrink wrap. And I think a shrink wrap definitely gave a much more better or much more interesting results. So we're going to use this method. So firstly, we need to create a spiral. Spiral is kind of a very traditional way of making a series of splines. And then we're going to create a line mesh. And we're going to change the title into points. So we just input all this kind of vector into points. So we can directly generate a mesh. So we can take the mesh object outputs, activate the mesh, create a target object. So now we do not really see anything. But if you select this target, it goes to edit mode, you can see what we're actually creating. Uh, this is not a very easy way to measure, uh, visualize everything, so I'm just going to take a 3D view to look at our spiral. So I'm going to select the node W goes to the left to synchronize the start and end radius, and then I'm going to increase the height. I'm going to central the spline so that everything has been covered, this Suzanne, very well. You can also decrease the amount of the resolution or you can also actually deal with these end angles to determine how many loops you have. So a lot of parameters you can actually play with. I'm going to take the size uh, one one. Okay. And then next step is really to select our target object and really wrap that onto the Suzanne head. So now we wrapped that onto the Suzanne head and, the, and if you go to the edit mode and goes back, you can see our actual results. So, I think everything looks kind of fine at this moment. Next step is to really create the thickness of our mesh. Uh, I think it will be better if we just recreate the splines. So I'm going to take the object mesh data. Take the object into object. And uh, I'm going to use the modifier because I want to read uh, the shrink wrap modifier. And pick a spline formations. Put the points into the points and we output the splines object outputs, activate splines, bevel depths, create a new target. So now we have our splines back. Uh, I put on the smoothness so that the splines are a little bit um, smooth. But you, if you can, you can definitely turn down this smoothness or you can even increase to give a kind of more interesting pattern. You see, you can do a lot of things with that. But I think uh, I personally like a little bit of smooth. Before we move on to uh, the next step, I would like to discuss uh, things that you can play around with these splines. So let's turn on our 3D viewers again. And you can look at this is currently our spine, uh, spiral looks like. 
and there is a transform vector that you can play uh, you can do so let's take on rotation matrix so basically what it does is uh, based on the origin the wood origin uh, it will actually rotate our spiral so by rotating so that you can change how it actually looks like so that maybe you want it to be kind of tilting or rotating or whatever the things you can even animate these entire things i don't know what you actually would like to do but it definitely becomes more interesting and again you can change all these kind of parameters as you wish so change all these kind of angles height and the amount sometimes the uh, amount does not really change too much but it's also a factor that you can potentially play around Another thing is that you can change all this kind of shrink wrap method and even the offset. So I don't usually take on the triggers. If you are unsure about these panels, I recommend you to watch the trigger tutorials I've made. You can go through the link on the right upper corner. But if you turn on this always, then all these kind of settings within the modifier will also be um, a kind of triggers within animation nodes. So you can turn on all this kind of offset or other things. Um, to see how it looks like like the above surfaces or other things I don't want to dig, uh, stay too much here but you, you can just uh, play at your free times so next step is simply just to instance light uh, on these uh, splines so I'm going to take the preset which is called instancing on spline I'm going to use the loop version not the list version but the loop version okay and take the splines into splines so now we have a matrix output this matrix output actually has some issues so i'm going to hit use go to software settings and turn on this vector but i'm going to discuss about why matrices has issues and then let's look on uh, our lights previously i append the files uh, you can find on the blender swap for free and uh, this is basically a light bulb and I'm going to instance this light bulb so uh, right click this entire collections and we're going to instance to scene so now we can actually hide on this light, uh, light bulb so let's put that into collection so we have this large light bulb right and basically this is something that I've discussed in my tutorials talking about the instancing to collections so if you're unsure again you can go to the tutorial the link on the right upper corners so put the matrices into place I'm going to copy these four objects and then instance our light bulb and immediately you can see our light bulb has been instanced uh, this amount is actually too high so let's use the interval method and then everything has been done okay so now this light bulb contains some issues they do have a kind of the good part of using matrices is the our light bulb will be oriented properly according to the curvature of all these splines but the the actual calculation that our computer gave us is not really desired because it's colliding with our Suzanne so it will be better if we make the make a proper rotation by ourselves so, but the question is how to actually do this kind of part the method actually turns to be a little bit more tradition is that I just want to do all this kind of light bulb uh, facing away from the wood origin which is right at our cursor so basically the we are going to compose matrix okay and then we're going to put the vectors into translations so at this moment our light bulb no longer actually has all this kind of controls the scale is actually too large so let's take a vector form values and then let's increase it a little bit so now we have all this kind of light bulb but they don't have rotation anymore to deal with the rotation we're going to use a node which is a direction to rotations So all this kind of light bulb will be facing away from the wood origin. So this is the easiest part you know, if you're dealing with the light bulb. And by the, using this method, you, you can actually make sure that your light bulb will actually never collide with your Suzanne. Okay. 
there's some other things you can potentially try, like use the different orientations. But generally, I don't think it's kind of a very nice idea I'll just to keep everything as a default. In this case. And yet when we hit actually the render views, you can actually take a look with all the light bulbs. Uh, you can actually change a lot of settings for this light bulb, or you can actually turn on these balloons to see how this light bulb is actually shining the light. When we are working with EV, um, the emission shaders is not a dealing with the light. So a better method is you create the actual light. So you need to create an actual light for emitting the light. Unless if you're using cycles, then you don't need to worry about anything. But if you're working with EV, then this turns to be a problem because we are not actually going to spend hours actually place all this light to each part of this light. It will be better if we can control everything with animation nodes. And there is definitely possibilities. So how can we actually do this? We are going to use the instancer from the animation nodes. So let's take the ob object instancer. And so we don't, you can actually copy it from the sources, from the lines that we just created. But it's also possible that you can simply just uh, use the point lamp. So I'm going to use the same get list lens that we've created earlier. And I'm going to duplicate this object matrix output and use the same matrices that we created earlier. Then immediately you can see there is a lot of light being actually created at the base of our splines. This is not a correct location. So it means we need to use the offset matrices. And I turn on the locations. If I directly increase this Z, you can see every all the lights could just ghost above the global axis. Uh, I'm going to hit the use, go to the advanced the settings, translation, turn on that into local axis. So it will just uh, ghost the Z from the local axis, which is pointing away from the world origin. As we have discussed earlier, use this direction to rotations. Okay. So now everything has basically been done. Uh, except that we need to also know the ways to actually control this kind of light. By default, the light instance from the animation nodes has a power of 10W, 10 watts, and the color is white. But how can we actually deal with these values? To control the intensity of each light, we simply use a node which is called Object Attributes Output. Uh, if you have watched my many of my other tutorials, you may know these nodes very well that I use this node usually to control the modifier constraints. So basically kind of a, a parameter of an object that's not directly assigned by animation nodes. For example, we use object matrix outputs to define the locations. We use the object material output to define the material. But if for many other parameters that's not directly assigned, for example, all these kind of settings, if I'm going to use the instance known vertices faces, then all these times you're going to use the object attribute output. And the traditional way to work with these settings is just you go you use your mouse hang on all these kind of parameters and you right click, copy data pass, paste the data pass, and you put the object into object. But in this particular case it tells you the attribute is not found. So the reason is actually a little bit tricky because this is when you have all these kind of green buttons, it means there is additional path data that has to be hang on before this energy. In this particular case, it's actually called the data energy instead of just the energy. This is kind of a very tricky point, but it happens a little bit times. This is kind of special cases. And now it says the value is the wrong type. So you just take a uh, correct type. When you're taking all these kind of numbers, then you realize it's actually a float number. Then you just increase all this kind of float, you can actually control the intensity of all this light. Uh, I do feel the, the original 10 is kind of satisfying enough, but uh, in case like your Susan head is extremely big, then you probably would like to increase the intensity of other things. And this kind of theory definitely works well with other parameters as well. And next thing that we need to discuss is simply about this light. And the next thing that we need to discuss is simply about this light color. Uh, the theory is actually very similar. Uh, 
instead of data energy, uh, let's just uh, right click. If you're unsure about the, the data path, because earlier we found that it's actually called a powerless, but the actual data path is called a data energy, not a data power, but the data energy. So maybe the color is not does not mean colors. So when you're unsure, you just copy and paste the data path, and then you put a data in front. And then it will cause the value has, has the wrong type. In this case, it also turns to be very weird because if you basically a com uh, take a RGB, RGB input, a color input. If you directly put a color input, it still says the value has the wrong type. This is very weird because um, this is a kind of a blender way of thinking. When it talks about RGB or whatever other things, uh, it's actually a vector. It's actually a vector of X, Y, Z. Uh, if you know shadows well, you understand the difference between these things. But in animation, it just does not really recognize. So you need to actually combine vector. Then you put the values in. Then everything becomes dark because X, Y, Z is actually not really working properly. But this also turns to be a very tricky moment because I don't actually know the formula to create this orange. So you can definitely set an orange and you know, oh, my R is 2.3, G is 0 0.8, and the blue is 0 0.126. So you type all this kind of value back to X, Y, Z. This is definitely one way to do that. But I think this is a kind of very stupid. Uh, I think I'm going to create a preset to simplify the workflow. But the currently the theory is basically you can take a color input and then you can decompose the color, uh, a separate color. And then you put the RGB back. So now you can actually set these colors. I know this is probably a little bit stupid, but for the moment you just have to st stick with this kind of workflow. So now you just have a Suzanne head, splines, lights, everything has been done uh, very nicely. Uh, just the two one more things. Earlier we actually controlled the scale of this light, but you can actually definitely scale it up. Just uh, um, be aware that when you actually scale up the object, you probably would like to scale up all this kind of light as well. So if you hit the use, goes to, no, actually no way. So just have to manually actually control this kind of light. A little bit not a procedural, but I think it's still acceptable. And you can definitely increase light intensities. So this is currently about it. So I hope you, uh, and then next tutorial, we will based on this kind of setup to move on to the text object, which is much more complicated than what we're actually doing right now. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.